So anyway, I'm watching this video, and it gets to this point where the Rivian truck is hooked up by uh, one of Monroe's female associates. And the video first says, not available. The screen blanks out. And then it goes to, this is a private video. So I go back a half hour later and go to about the same spot and it continues on. Uh, and it was a pretty good review of the Rivian as far as the towing goes. But there was one understatement, I thought, and I'm going to try to find that right now. Now, if you watch this, you're going to see this steering wheel wiggle when she accelerates from a dead stop, towing this trailer that's about 65% capacity of the Rivian. And watch this torque steer. Now, she says it's because the tongue weight is high and, the, and there's not enough weight on the front wheels. Now, let's just see if you can watch this and see this. Um, I think this is pretty radically bad for a $100,000 truck. Now she's accelerating. Now you see that steering wheel going back and forth? That is torque steer or some type of malfunction in the uh, stability control or something else. Now she was attributing it to physics and the weight uh, of the tongue weight being high on this trailer. And it's true. But still, for a $100,000 truck, I think that's pretty bad. Okay, this is from MotorOne.com. Um, I think I may have misstated this in a comment I made, but anyway, it's talking about the F-150. We can, you can go through, you can read this, pause this, and read this on your own. But, uh, 50% of the non-towing range. So, with an Airstream ta trailer and the F-150 Lightning, uh... It gets 50% of the range it usually would. Has the tow technology pla uh, pla package and so forth. Extended range battery and max trailer tow package. Spec for hauling. The Eric Chim camp camper trailer he hauled was around 6,000 pounds. Packed with gear, 20 gallons. The only occupant of the truck was him. Truck uh, was just flat road without any hills. Before Schmidt collected the truck, uh, range was 85 miles. And after any of the measurements of the trailer and the system, like you calculated it to 54 miles, he said he's seeing 0.8 kilowatts per mile uh, when the trailer's corrected, uh, around half of the usual. He's getting without the air trailer, Airstream trailer. So I think we can say this is a real use case. Okay, this is the infamous car scoops uh, test where uh, one of the testing entities did uh, three panic stops, basically, 70 to zero with the Ford Lightning, which ended up with the brakes smoking, uh, ABS failing, and the brakes fading out. I just wanted to say, you can pause this and read this. This is not unusual. Some comments have said, well, nobody drives like this. Well, if you're on the 101 freeway or the 405 freeway, the last time I was on the 101, I did at least five of these stops. Uh, within five minutes, it was uh, a traffic situation. So it is common. Um, the thing is, I had a friend who had a Durango who had a similar problem, uh, SUV Durango, I believe. And, and the, he had to constantly get the, uh, disc brakes, uh, replaced in the back, uh, back of the car because of the, uh, uh, warpage because they were overheating. And this could be all four disc brakes on the uh, F-150 Lightning, a major problem in my opinion. So, as you can see, the Ford, uh, the Endurance is a ton lighter. I don't believe it's going to have these problems, and I don't think it's going to have the towing problems of the uh, Rivian either. Now, this just 
going over the BEV manufacturers, they're relying too much on this uh, regenerative braking. Here you have the Suburban, the biggest consumer vehicle they build at GM, and the Lyric, which is three feet shorter, and they weigh exactly the same. Uh, I think we can count on the Lyric having similar braking problems unless, you know, GM has used the same braking system in the Suburban uh, and the Lyric. But, um, you know, these weights are getting out of hand as well. The Rivian is massive. I mean, uh, you know, the, the weight of the Rivian, I think the weight is like, even a thousand pounds more than this and uh i don't think anybody's done any of these panic uh, stopping tests with the rivian so I, I just wanted to bring this up and i think this is one of the advantages of the endurance we're going to see how the endurance does on towing and how it does on braking and these other tests but i'm speculating that it's going to do better okay this is video from a twitter post i'm sure you guys have seen this of all these endurances you know I don't know. You know, is Foxconn and Lord, are they sandbagging? Because they sure have been cranking out these PPP vehicles for a long time. And I'm hoping that the uh, testing and everything else is going to be so good on these things that they're not going to face the problems of these other cars, of uh, these other trucks. But in any case, anybody who doesn't think they're ready to go into production, they're sadly mistaken. Capital is the only problem. So here is, uh, this is uh, Investor Observer. It's just a kind of a survey of what analysts think the future is for Lordstown Motors Ride. Not to bore you with this. On average, analysts give the stock a hold rating. Price target is $2.50. Uh, expect the stock to rise by 20, 30% over the next 12 months. That earns the stock an average rating of 1, which is better than 1% of the stocks they raise. Um, I think this is a present, obviously a present rating. This does not account for any catalyst, such as the start of commercial production, or the first sale, and ongoing sales. And uh, I'm going to go over gas price at uh, fourth quarter, right when the endurance is going to launch in the biggest market it's probably going to address and then where its biggest sales are going to be. But this is the present thinking on uh, Lordstown. Okay, this is my estimate uh, forecast for the gas price when the Endurance launches sales. And they're going to launch sales in California, the biggest state for EVs. And I believe in the Los Angeles region, uh, region in uh, 2022 Q4, 7.38 a gallon. That's what I have. And, uh, you know, I've got some flack on Reddit about my forecast. Hey, people, not an economist, but uh, these are backed by a lot of uh, hours of research on my part and a lot of number crunching. So not see the pants estimates. And... Hey, if you got a better estimate, let's hear it. As far as, um, uh, just let me comment on the comments on Reddit. Uh, people, you're underestimating the accelerating rate of change into EVs. You're not getting it. Uh, the, the, the negative commenters. As well, you're overlooking the 2008 magnitude financial crisis that's going to happen in China. That's going to hurt Ford, GM, and Tesla. And I think this is all, uh, again, going to put uh, Lordstown Motors in the uh, catbird seat for these fleet uh, sales. We're going to see how the supply chain works out. Uh, but uh, I think all these forces are coming to play. And I think uh, I am uh, very positive uh, about uh, Lordstown's vehicle launching with a, with a good technical launch, which I think they will get with Hightower in charge. Uh, um, one of the next videos I'm going to do is on the, uh, on the prospect of financing. And by the way, I believe, and I believe uh, Nayavaji has stated, if not directly implied, that they can start production without a capital raise. Uh, but, of course, they're going to need a capital raise um, 
we're going to go through that in another video. Anyway, this was my update on uh, on the present state of things uh, with Lordstown Motors. Um, we got a lot of shorts. Uh, you know, they're keeping the price below two dollars on this stock, and uh, I think um, I think we're going to have a, a launch. Hopefully, a successful launch. We're not going to face these problems that Ford and Rivian are facing. Uh, with their pickups. And by the way, the Ford, I do not believe, I do not believe fleet buyers are going to, it's not going to be available, first of all. There's going to be a limited number of units. Second of all, we don't know what these fleet dealerships are going to charge them. And uh, lastly, uh, I don't know that uh, uh, any of these fleet buyers are going to go for more than just a test, uh, test round with these F-150 Lightnings. I mentioned that in my last video with the... Um, whole thing of a new model year coming out in 2026 which i have some rumors on as well anyway this is mxux i hope you liked the video and uh, uh look forward to uh, upcoming videos about the funding uh, possibilities also i've done some work on the joint venture with uh, foxconn all right thanks a lot for watching guys if you get a second subscribe okay